Uh, good morning and welcome to this live. Uh, let me know if you're in the chat, if you see me well, hear me well. I want to check everything before I start. But today we will talk about original characters, how to paint them from imagination. And I'm going to give you <clears throat> my best tricks on how to do so. Because um, I feel there's a bit of confusion there. People think that they have to do it 100% from their memory. And I have a good trick that I want to uh, show you guys that you can use. So I'll be doing that today. Uh, and a live demo. Whoops, that's my YouTube that I'll have to stop. And there we go. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, but in the meantime, if you're in the chat, if you see me well, hear me well, let me know where you are in the world and what time it is. For me, I am in Thailand and it is uh, 7 in the morning. It's very early. Uh, but this is the best time for me to be able to reach as many people as possible. <clears throat> um, so, so yeah, and I'll be starting in a minute. I just want to make sure that you guys hear me well and see me well. So if you're in the chat, don't be shy. Let me know. I'm seeing George. <clears throat> it says, hi, brother. Hi to you. Uh, Aran. Uh, Stuff to do that safety dance. I'm not sure what you mean by that. <laughs> um, Puerto Rico for you, George. Uh, Joby's from India. Yoko from Norway. It's one. Thank you so much for joining. That's that's dedication. Love it. Um, Kimi from Jamaica, 7 p.m. Okay, awesome. So we'll a few places. So hi guys, Pradita is there. Awesome, thank you guys for letting me know. <clears throat> and Mew Perry says, here uh, you well, see you well from Quebec, which is my uh, home province. Hi, do you, mean, do you mean Quebec City or Quebec, Quebec province? I'm gonna assume Quebec province. Um, all right, you guys, thank you so much for joining. So. I got a bonjour from Canada. Awesome. Bonjour back. All right, let's jump right in, right? So uh, I have a pair of presentation. <clears throat> it's going to last um, just a few minutes. Um, if you guys didn't know, in the Discord uh, community, uh, this for the, last, the next for the next two weeks, we have a Draw This In Your Own Style Challenge. It's one of my illustrations that I've been doing um, that, um, that basically I did from imagination. It's a character. So I thought, why not? Uh, discussing about how I did it. Give you a few tricks for you guys. I mean, probably says Quebec City. That's awesome. Um, and and so um, I decided to make this live just to guys to uh, to show you, guide you on how you make you make your own characters with more ease. Um, at the same time, I'll be showing a few tricks, uh, and we'll have some fun. If you have any questions during it, um, I'll have a Q and A right after it. So. Just stick with me. And um, all right, I think I lost everybody. Um, that's unfortunate. Um, if you guys are still there, hopefully you're still there. But I have no idea. I think it just cut my signal. All right, I think you guys are back. Let me know if you're back. <laughs> I switched the internet because I was on the wrong one. And I think that was a big mistake. Um, Adam says it's the first snow day. That's cool. All right, I'll wait. A, I'll wait a second, guys. Let me know if you're back. Um, and I'll start right now. Put back the camera on me. Um, note to self: change the internet connection before the live, not during the live. Mm. All right. Thank you, Jessica. Let me know it's okay. Awesome. So, all right, let's jump right in then. If you have any question, like I was saying, I'm gonna have a QA and a at the end. Uh, so just uh, stick around. Um, so like I was saying, this is a technique that I've been using for, um, can I move that away? No, all right. It's a technique I've been using for a few years on different pieces. And I think one of the most um, popular one that I have is definitely this one. This was my series for from Heads and Clouds. And I want to explain the difference between um, from imagination and from memory. So drawing from memory, 
You would had studied so many things from landscape to anatomy to, you know, things like perspective, all of it in your head to a point that you're so good at remembering all of it that you can do it from memory. All right. And I think a lot of people think that this is the only way to do it from imagination, which is false. Imagination or drawing from imagination means you have a vision, you have something you want to create, and then you find the tools, reference pictures and techniques to actually do it. This is exactly what I did with the Heads in a Cloud series that I did. So I had a vision um, of doing portraiture that had um, covered ladies within the clouds. And so what I went is I went to find some reference pictures to help me, right? So this was a reference picture that I used for the portrait. You can see probably that they're pretty much similar. Uh, the model is Ashley Moore. I found a few, I know I created myself a giant folder of images with clouds, right? The one thing that I had to change was the light um, the light direction on the clouds because I wanted to have the same light direction for each cloud. So when I did that, I made sure that the bright yellow was on the same side for each of them and I kept the same colors and the same light thing for each of them. That was the only thing that I did I kind of differently. For the rest, I used a lot of different uh, images uh, that show cloud to help me. <clears throat> and the hand. Uh, the hand was not there on the original uh, reference, so I found a few reference pictures uh, of hands and then I decided to draw this. And this is how I created this one. It's 100% from imagination, but I've been using reference pictures to help me along the way. I'll show you a few more examples. Next one I have is the mushroom portrait. That was a drawing in your own style uh, challenge that I did with the uh, paintable community. And as you can see, what I did is I found a portrait of a model that I liked and then I modified it and I found a reference picture of the mushroom that I wanted to add and started to actually play with it. Um, I'm seeing a question here. What painting program is this? Yeah, this is Photoshop. This is Photoshop. Um, so, and so, yeah. So the idea is to find the reference picture that you need to create something. And sometimes you, you have a vision and then you find the reference pictures and sometimes you find the reference pictures and then you have a vision, you know? So sometimes you have an idea based on what you see and sometimes you have an idea that you want to do before. Here's another one that I think the pumpkin lady came before. The pumpkin lady that I did during the um, pumpkin challenge that we had uh, last month. So I found a reference picture and I remember I saw this reference picture before and I was like, well, this is cool. I could definitely change the head. Uh, so it was like kind of a study. And what I like about this technique is You'll practice things. So if you're still in in the train of thoughts that you need to do studies, this is the perfect way to create studies, get better at practice with reference pictures, and then give them a twist that will make them your own illustration, right? So this is like perfectly fine to put in your portfolio. I would say it's even perfectly fine to actually print um, and call it as your own. So you have just uh, basically the reference picture. There was one reference picture. And then I had two artists. Uh, one was mine, obviously. Um, I wanted to get inspired from the pumpkin that I created. And the other one was the um, artist Ignasi. I just really liked the way he was playing with the uh, chromatic aberration, those kind of lines here that he, he does. Um, and his series for Gucci was exactly that. So I got inspired by it, and I tried to have like the kind of same blocking for the colors, the way he places lights and shadows, uh, the little blue line here and red line here, that's to mimic a little bit what he have done, but it's basically chromatic aberration, but done in a stylized way, instead of using a filter like I, I like to do, let's say on Procreate, but you have just a filter to put in. This was placed manually, um, the red and the blue here. And that was super fun to do. Um, so that's another example. I'll show you another one that I did recently. Uh, this one was a landscape. Now this one, I wouldn't feel comfortable putting in uh, my print shop, for example, because it's too close from the reference. Uh, but when it comes to painting a study and just studying it, that's absolutely fine. Um, as long as you give the uh, proper um, references that you credit the artists. Uh, Anthony Spencer on Flickr was the artist for this picture. 
are absolutely beautiful. Um, and then, yeah, I, I wanted to make it a little bit more Christmassy for um, for the team of the month. In the Digital Pin Academy, we're doing uh, Christmas or holiday uh, cards. Uh, and I thought that could have been definitely something that could I could see on a card, right? I just had to add a few things. So I added the, the deers and some lights uh, for it. For the rest, it was just basically doing a photo studies. Um, so I found the reference pictures, add them, and created something that was just a little bit twisted. Obviously, this one is not change a lot, uh, but just enough to give some storytelling to it, basically. Um, so let's continue with the one that we've been doing uh, this week. So this is the Draw This and Your Own Style Challenge that is uh, happening right now. If you didn't know, uh, you can participate until the end of November. I'll be giving five free entry to the Digital Painting Academy for five lucky winners that I'm going to take at random. All you have to do is to participate, really. And here's the way I created this one. I found uh, a few reference. This one I used for the pose uh, or pause of the body. Pose, pause, pose. Pose of the body. Um, this one for obviously the facial expression uh, and the bow. Uh, but I put the bow at the back here and I changed the hair uh, to match a little bit more in the first one. And some reference picture just for the, uh, the shoulders. Now the shoulders, I didn't, I didn't know exactly how I would have done that. So I did like a few sketches and just, and obviously the dress, I did completely different. I wanted to something that looks like a candy cane. Um, but this was great because as I built it, I had reference pictures to basically build things that if I had done it from memory, it would have been really hard. But if you have a reference picture, it really helps. So it's kind of a mix between a photo study and something done from imagination. And I think it's the perfect way to start uh, to start painting from imagination. If you're a beginner to intermediate, this is going to help you a lot. Find a few reference pictures, put them together and create your own work from it. And so today I wanted to just give a quick, a quick demo. Uh, I found this picture here and I thought I could transform, uh, her into a like holiday elf, um, and all the elf. So I'll do that sketch here. And if you have any question after that, I'll answer all of them. But I'm just going to do this and kind of um, talk about my process along the way. I'll put the chat just a little bit to the right here so I see what I'm doing. And I'll have the reference picture here to start. So basically what you want to do when you do those kind of things is find the reference picture for the character that you want to create which for me, I'll be using the first one here, right here. Uh, and then i oh, probably going to use a different brush than this. Um, where's my brush? And, and then I'm going to use those two reference picture here for, uh, just the different details. Basically I want to put on it, but I'm going to use this one for the anatomy and the portrait itself. Um, so yeah, I'm having this here. The first thing I like to do is just to concentrate on the shapes. It's much easier to actually paint with shapes than painting with trying to do details, right? So just a circle for the cranium. And then I'm trying to just see the angle here, which seems a little bit straight slash on a curve, something like this. And then the jaw. That could be just the basic start. I'm going to place a center line just to help me with like measurements, just like this. <clears throat> and I like to do things with loose sketch. Then I refine the sketch and it's a work in progress. I'm not the best at, at sketching personally, but this technique really, really helps me. So I can just place the, I'll zoom in a little bit and place the nose about here. I'm first thinking about the shape. I'm looking at the shape at the base of the nose like right here kind of thing. It forms like a, a triangle of some sort. So I'm placing a triangle here, just kind of not go into too many details. And basically it's like a pyramid that I place there and I'll be able to modify it later on. 
So that's for one thing. Uh, then I have kind of the mouth that's come here. I'm just going to put the circle for now. I have the eyes that will be about here. The nose that will kind of bring the eyebrow here. The other eyebrow here. And I can find the angle of the eyes. So if I'm looking at the angle of the eyes, it's almost like a, like a pyramid of some sort. I'm not going to add too many details at this point. Just this is perfectly fine, just a few lines. I'm going to go and add some basic hair. And at this point, it's really pretty much just a photo study. I haven't done anything that is different than the, the reference picture, which is fine. I'll be able to build upon this in a minute. For now, just want to kind of have the basic basic reference. Basing the mouth. I'm not trying to do the line to um, to define as well. Just letting my hand go, uh, get guided slowly. I've just an eye there, an eye there. Uh, and I'm going to modify this as an elf, like I was saying. So probably going to add some, some an, an ear right here. And I put this here because I want to add the hat. So kind of just doing just the hat here. It's going to wrap around the head. I'll delete this as I don't need it. Right now it looks very blocky. There's things to change, but I don't want to get into details for now. I just want to have my base. That's going to be my hat right here. And I'll try to have some shape to it. And something like that. And that's going to be just a bit thicker, but I'll do that after. And that comes here to the back. This, and then I can just zoom out. I'm still going to put the shoulders in it. Something like that. Doesn't have to be much more than that. And that's going to be the first base. From there, I'm just going to add some more details. Uh, I want to have those triangles. So that's when you can have some fun. You have your base there. You use your, your reference picture, and that's fine. Now you can just have some fun and just look at the details you can add. I know I, I like that kind of pattern shape. Oh, the triangle that we have here. Might have that like this. Something like that. That's pretty cool. Um, that character had like a like a bow. I might try to see if I can add that right here. Just a shape once again. Not going into details. I think she had like. Let me go back here. We had this. There's like some straps on the side I'll put more details later on but for that for now that's cool and I'm just gonna move that here I think I have the snap down take that out and that's the baseline right from there it's a question of just modifying a few things I'm going to create a new layer put this one and lower the opacity and you already have the base, like your concept is there. You just have to basically at this point is just really sketching and taking your time. Usually I like to start with the eyes. I'll keep my reference photo uh, a little bit closer. And then, yeah, it's just taking your time at this point. If it takes you time, just take the time. You don't have to rush that part, really. I know for me, I like to do a lot more than just one one go at it because I don't have the most like the most um, 
clean lines when I do any sketch. I have a, a shaky hand. But it doesn't stop me from anything. For you out there that also has a shaky hand, you can do a lot of things with it. This, I'm just going to put that already lower, just probably here. Have some fun. So as I'm doing this, uh, if you guys have any question, let me know. I'm going to place the chat box in front of me uh, and I'll answer all of your questions. But basically that was the that was the technique I wanted to show you guys because it's a simple technique yet super powerful. I'll move that there maybe. Uh, super powerful um, that I use on a lot of things actually. So I really wanted to share that with you guys today. I usually like to also like just show the patterns of the shadow when I do that sketch. So I might add that later as well. Uh, question from Steve. Oh yeah, if everybody can put a capital Q in it, just sometimes if there's like chat, it's gonna be easier for me to, to put it, but uh, I'll, I'll get your, your, your question, Steve. Uh, you say, how do you feel using texture and illustration? Um, I love to use textures on, on all my illustration, to be honest. I usually try to render with uh, something that has some texture. So from the get go, I have something to play with because I feel like adding texture at the end sometimes is harder, but um, absolutely love it at any stage of the illustration, really. Um, you can either add them, like I was saying, at the end, because there's ways to do this, or just start rendering with, um, with a texture brush from the get-go to help you with this. And I can already tell that my proportions are kind of wrong-ish. So I'm just gonna probably just take that jaw and put it back up a little. And when I'm gonna do the mouth, I'll do it just from the hot higher here. Um, Eric says, do you use Wacom Cintiq or a flat on the desk joint uh, iPad. I'm using uh, this very old Wacom tablet. Uh, I think it's an Intuos, but it's a very old one. Um, it's a semi-professional one. It's not even a professional one. And the reason why I'm using it, it's because it's built like a tank. And I've been traveling with the professional drawing tablet of Wacom uh, years ago, and it broke down on me, and it was a pain in the well, <laughs> painting the ass for lack of a better word, uh, to go find another one on the island of Bali, that's where I was at the time, um, that I decided to keep it. Eventually, I would like to upgrade, uh, upgrade then. Um, I was thinking about maybe getting myself a Cintiq eventually, but as I still travel quite a bit, um, like right now I'm in Thailand, but um, next year I'll be back to Colombia, and having to travel all of that gear, uh, which I already have quite a bit, I have the camera, obviously, that I talk with you guys from, I had the, the tablet, the computer, I got two lamps here to help me for the lives, I got a microphone, all of that stuff becomes very, very heavy uh, and not easy at all to actually like travel with. A Cintiq that I would like to have, if I were to have one, I would have like a, a very big one. And I have an iPad, so um, I think what I'll do is I'm probably going to give just a, a go to learn how to just use Procreate better. Uh, and that should help for that for the for the time being. But eventually I would like to have a studio and I would like to have a 24 or 27 uh, Cintiq. That would be awesome. Uh, Elizabeth says, I, I miss quite a bit 
uh the youtube stream stopped and i didn't know it was streaming again yeah i'm so sorry guys i i did the mistake that's all on me you'll be able hopefully to see the replay um but yeah i changed the internet in the middle of it because the internet was we have multiple internet here and the one that i had was not ours it was the neighbor and it's slower uh and when i did that i, I was hoping that the stream would just pick up where I left off and now I just cut up. So my bad, lesson learned. I have to check before I start the stream, not after. Uh, but you'll be able to see the replay. Um, Steve says, using a Cintiq versus tablet is one of the, is one better over the other or it doesn't matter. It's, here's what I have to say about this. No matter what's your tools, it's it's not your tools that makes the artist. It's like the tools are there to help you, right? If you like to paint on a surface directly, go towards a Cintiq, go towards an iPad. If you like to paint on the side with a tablet, go on it. If you go straightly from um, from traditional media and you would like to do you know, the switch, I think probably going with like something like a Cintiq would make a lot of sense because it's going to feel probably more natural, although still very much different than, than a piece of paper. But, um, but a Cintiq might feel more natural. But if you're already using a tablet, it's going to be a learning curve no matter what. And that's 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 the reason why also I took so much time for me to kind of do it. Like I've been using, I have been having an iPad, iPad for two years now and I barely used it. And it's not because I don't like to do, to paint with the iPad. It's just I didn't have the time to kind of go through the learning curve of learning how to paint with it. New tools means a new process, that process takes you time. Uh, and usually when I sit down, I know my tools pretty much very well. So I just want to paint, you know, I don't want to learn it. So it's, it's a learning curve, I think that stops most people. But if you're starting from scratch, um, I would probably suggest to go towards a screen tablet. Um, Cause you'll end up there, I think with your career. You'll end up there trying to do illustration for a living. It's going to help you to just kind of, yeah, just have a better flow probably with time. But you'll need to, no matter the tool, you'll need to learn it. Um, so, yeah, right here, I'm just adding some more details, but I'm still going to have another pass at it afterwards, I think. Because um, I don't think the lines are clean enough. <clears throat> Um, uh, to think of, I didn't expect you to do that table, that tablet. Yeah, um, Giuseppe, uh, I don't have the, the best of the best right now in terms of tablet. Um, Grilia says, hello, I would like to ask when the line art is needed. Um, I usually, I like to, to do line art but it's not needed. You know, there's people that draw without line art. I think it's a question of like workflow, uh, knowing what you like to do, but it's not needed. Uh, it's one way to do this process, uh, which for me kind of helps me to just establish the details. Um, and it's easier, a sketch is much easier to modify than a whole rendered illustration. So it kind of gives me that step in between where I can just kind of place a few things, place a few details, know where I'm going with the illustration before committing to something that has colors and shading and all of that stuff. So that's the reason why I make sketches. But sometimes I like to paint um, directly from either rendering or colors, especially if I do like a photo study, 
um, or have like a very basic sketch. Uh, like if you guys follow the artist, um, his name is Sam Does Art. Or I don't remember his, his second name, but Sam. Uh, he has that kind of technique. He actually does that. He has a very basic sketch just to say that he has a roadmap to place his first values, first colors. Um, but I wouldn't say that his sketches are pretty in any way, and he doesn't need to um, because they're doing the job to just helping to place to place the value. But I like to have a, a sketch, especially like if I, I use from reference picture and I'm going to start doing something from imagination, having just those basic lines really helps, I think, personally. Um, so that's how I like to do it. Also, if you do anything from imagination, having a sketch will help you with just presentation client to have something that you didn't commit too much uh, because corrections will come afterwards. Uh, and at the end of the day, um, illustration is not about a race. It's not about being the fastest. I know a lot of artists out there like to um, pose their time as in it mattered. It, it doesn't matter. No matter if you take an hour, two hours uh, to do your just your sketch even, which I usually take, uh, it doesn't matter. The client won't come back at you and... Um, and ask you how much time did you spend on it. All they want is a pretty, uh, a pretty final outcome. You know that's what's important to them. So take as much time as you need to come with a pretty outcome. In. That's that's what's important. So yeah, I could definitely like continue pushing this. I might push it just a little bit more, but I think the the technique is here, guys. That's pretty much what I wanted to show. I have like basically a character from imagination right here based on just a few reference pictures that I saw. Now I could go and push the sleeve, for example, and kind of see if I can do that. Puffy sleeves on the side. And just add just a few more details like this. Um, there's like a collar here. And then I could add that same kind of Poofy sleeve here. Something like that. Might delete that here. Don't need it. Now I can take out the one under and have something a little bit cleaner. I would definitely go back and have another round here and just have taken my, more of my time. I might take that off now. I don't need it. And just come back here. I would probably take more of my time, flip it one side to the other side, and have some more time. Uh, so if you have more questions, let me know. But this is exactly the technique I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you how easy it can be to just create something from, uh, I should have moved that at the same time, create something from imagination without having to stress about um, about having to know everything. You know, you don't, you just have to follow. And that's, it's like making a study, which helps you and then create something from imagination, which is awesome, all at the same time. Um, so yeah, that was pretty much the technique I wanted to show you guys this morning. If you have more questions, please let me know. I'll stick with you for a little bit longer. Probably gonna push a little bit this, but at this point it's, I don't even have to probably go back to those um, those reference pictures, I could just have some fun here and just add to what I already have here because this is plenty for me to start rendering it. I was thinking at maybe like adding like, like a candy cane here. Something like that, just to add some, some more details to the story. Something like that, and probably some background and some stuff. But that's it. That's pretty much it. And it's exactly that technique that I've been using 
on it looks like a large cigar yeah it's a bit too big huh? maybe i'm gonna put that just smaller and she has a, just a tiny candy cane i think that's better good call um and so yeah this is exactly the thing that i've been using for uh, all the previous one that i showed you uh right here right there all of these i started with quick sketches uh like i'm doing like for this one to push them and so i'll see if i finish this one and so uh you'll be able to see the final on my instagram uh later on uh eric says can you talk a little a little uh about blending modes and how you use them in your coloring process. Uh, yeah, I can give uh, a few a few details about this. Also remind everybody, I'm gonna have a workshop on uh, on Sunday where I'm gonna talk a lot more about uh, techniques. I have a workshop that I've been running for a few years, which is super valuable. It's seven step on how to paint from imagination, on how to become a better artist, on how to get a better ha art habit to see the, the greatest progress. And I'm going to do that on Sunday, guys. There's a link in the description of this video. Uh, you can click on it to make sure that you reserve your spot. Um, but yeah, Eric, when it comes to blending mode, um, I'm not going to go into too much detail because it can be com complicated, but different blending mode have different use. Um, usually what I like to have is, like, let's say if I were to push this one, no, I'm just going to maybe just kind of put that in liquify just for a second because I see a few things I want to modify, but I don't want to spend too much time on, on the illustration. Just modify the chin here a little bit. The mouth here. Probably in the nose a little bit. Just pushing and pulling a few things here. Probably the hair. I feel like the hat could be probably smaller and maybe higher here. Just bear with me for a second. I think that's better. Yep. Um, what I would probably do is I start always with a um, normal layer, um, and I'll try to. I'll try to give you just the, the crash crash core version here. So I'm just going to make like a, a very quick selection because I was not planning on painting that live. It's going to take too much time, but um, I'll take with just a basic skin tone kind of color here. Oof, lagging. Um, and then there's different blending tone, uh, blending mode to do a, a, a few different things. Uh, so the normal blending mode, which is the one that I just use here, I would use that for the flat colors, right? So when it comes to um, the red of the cap, all the different colors that you have, right? That you need to just take your time here to just kind of do one at a time. I would take. Uh, I would take my time to do all of them. So that's one for just the flat colors. Use a normal one. Then when it comes to adding your lights and shadows, there's lots of different blending mode that can be used. Uh, one that I really like to use for shadows is multiply. Multiply would add the color, which is super important in a shadow. You should always have some colors in it. So I could use like, um, like a pale blue to uh, mimic the, the sky. And it's going to add just a little bit of color and add some shadow at the same time. And for the highlights, I like to do the overlay because overlay will add some light and some shadows so you can play with both. So for things for like uh, the skin tone, for example, adding just a little bit more of light here with some colors, maybe a little bit more color, something like that can be super interesting. Um, so I like to use those two mainly to do everything I do. And usually I use also the color dodge but the color dodge, I would use it for a special effects uh, because color dodge, what happened with it is that it's going to burn a lot. See, it's going straight to white almost. Uh, I usually use it with like a very dark color. And so you're going to have those punch of lights and add some special effects. Those three, those three blending modes are basically what I use all the time. 
Uh, Steve says, any suggestion on prices, your illustration, when you're first starting out, uh, you ask for more or less. Um, if you're doing commissions, it should be based on the value that you give, not, um, not the illustration itself necessarily. Right? So there's a lot of things to think about. There is who is the client. Uh, if it's a client with a presence that is local, national, or international, that's going to have an impact on your price. Uh, an illustration that's going to be on covers all over the world is valued a lot more than something that's going to be just for the shop on the corner of your street, right? Uh, so that's one thing to think about. Uh, obviously, the complexity of it will change. So it's very hard. It's a question I know that um, a lot of, of you guys ask, and that's why I created a course about it. I call uh, I call it the Going Pro. Uh, it's a masterclass that I created uh, that on a regular day, you would pay $800 for it. It's a giant class with a lot of tips on it on how to approach clients, how to get clients, how to deal with clients, uh, and there's how to price your art as well within it, plus a ton of more stuff. You usually get it for free when you join Illustration for Imagination program, which the doors are closed right now, but here's the cool thing uh, so, so everybody can know. I'm doing this workshop on Sunday, and on Sunday I'm going to open the doors to uh, the Black Friday deal that we have. And for a special limited time, you'll be able to get that class for absolutely free. So if you don't want to miss that, uh, you can join me on uh, the workshop on Sunday. I'll be talking about this. Um, Steve says, thank you. You're welcome. Eric says, awesome. Uh, thanks for the explanation. You're absolutely welcome, guys. Uh, I'll let you go with the rest of your evening or day if you're in Australia, because Australia will start early, or if you're in Asia with, like me. Uh, have a good day, guys. Let me put my face back so you guys can see me bigger. Um, I want to say thank you for everybody that joined me. You see that the light is all like pushed here because you guys don't see anything. There you go. Uh, thank you so much for everybody that joined me. I hope this was helpful that you learned a thing or two. I'm so sorry to have crashed the link. Uh, that was uh, terrible uh, from me, but I'll know next time. Uh, and I'm hoping to see you guys on uh, Sunday for the workshop. Have a good day and happy painting, guys.